Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy and welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm going to draw Starry Night. This is a painting by Vincent Van Gogh and I'm going to do a replica of it, sort of, at least parts of it, on a card. And I'm going to try to mimic this technique using ink tense pencils. And I'll talk more about those as we get there. The paper that I'm using is Montval watercolor paper and I've taped it down with some delicate frog tape onto a board so it'll stay still and flat. I sketched out the general shapes of some of the swirls and circles in the painting, and then I stamped my bears, and I used a paper plate to make that big arc for the hillside. And I first drew it in pencil, and then I went over it with a Sharpie because Sharpie won't bleed with water. I did the yellows first in the sky because I wanted those yellows to remain very, very yellow. And if I did the yellows and the blues at the same time, there's a big chance that I'm going to have them bleed together. And when they bleed together, they're gonna make a green. If I wait until later to do the blues, then hopefully I'm gonna be able to keep my blues from contaminating that yellow any more than necessary. So I'm gonna have some places where they are transparent over, to, over each other, but at least it's going to be less than doing them wet on wet. So here I'm just adding water to the green and you can see how little pencil I had and look how much color I get off of it. It spreads across that entire area from just having a few scribbles along that line. And that's one of the really fun things about these is that, that what little pigment there is in those pencils is really, really powerful. And you can do a lot with it and spread that color really far. On the bears, I colored them with black and I'm painting it so that I'm leaving some highlight on that side facing the moon so that the bears look like they're very well lit by the moon. And I'm not worrying a whole lot about smoothing out the bears themselves because I'm gonna add some fur texture to them. Originally, I was thinking maybe they would be all smooth and all the texture would be in that background, but I realized I think having the bears have the same kind of texture as the background would be really fun and it would make it look like a unified image. So I started going over the wet paint with the pencil. You can do that with these. There are some watercolor pencils that you can't do that with, but with these in particular, the lines get a little fatter than they would be when you're drawing with, um, with the pencils on dry paper, but they also get softer. The lines just get softer and softer. I'm using, I use black for the bottom part, and now I switched over to a charcoal gray, and I can't really tell the difference, but in my mind it seemed to help because I'm trying to use a lighter color as I get into the lighter areas toward the top. So I'm just filling in some of those spots, and what I do when I'm coloring something like this is to squint at it, and when you squint you can see if you've got enough shadows, and if you've got some areas that need a little bit more smoothing, if there's any big things that sort of stick out and need a little tweaking. So I'm just about finished with my little bears so that I can move on to the sky because the yellow is all dry by now. And I wanted to have some dark blue sections and light blue sections because that's what Van Gogh had on his painting. He had like that top part is gonna be a really deep blue and then there's a white swirl and I'm just gonna put a few lines in there, not very much. And then down below that, it goes dark blue again. So I'm just gonna add more pencil in the sections that I want darker and less in the ones that I want lighter. And you'll also notice my lines are going in the direction that his did. So I'm trying to mimic his strokes. I actually have my phone out off to the side while I'm shooting this video so that I can see his painting and a, a visual representation of it digitally Sometimes I find that having a digital representation works better than a printout of it just because I get more of the true color. Although I guess it depends on whether the photographer that took the picture and posted it has true color. And I don't know what the actual color is because I have never been blessed to see this one in real life. And someday I'd like to. I believe it's at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And I've been there before, but I don't recall ever seeing this one. And I'm pretty sure I would remember it if I had seen it. So I'm really starting to pull out those swirly shapes now because as the other sides, the top and the bottom get darker, you can definitely see that white swoosh a whole lot better. The colors that I'm using in this are going to be listed in the description down below and on my blog, 
I didn't remember to write them all down. However, when I was all finished, I had my stack of pencils. So I did add them to the blog post so that you'll know which colors that I used in case you want to try this one. Because it's actually not too hard of a technique given that there's not any real drawing to be done. You're just really putting lines and colors together to sort of fit a little, little pattern. And I'm trying to add enough dark colors. I'm gonna hit this with water again, just so I can get a darker section. But I really am just following what he did on his painting and casing, casing one of the masters, which is really something that I think I might like to try more of. If you guys have any ideas on great paintings, especially by the old masters, because I'm a big fan of, of those folks, not as much modern art kind of things, but a lot of the old masters I love. And I think I'd like to start doing a little casing of a few more paintings. So if there's a favorite you have, or if there's something that you think a technique would be really interesting to try with one of our card making or coloring mediums, I would love to give it a shot. So leave me a comment in the description if there's something that you think I ought to give a shot at. So these are the lines that I'm going to kind of start leaving most of those intact. I'm gonna water down the ones that are right around that star, but I'm gonna just spread out a few of them and soften them, but I really wanna leave a lot more of those lines so I get the same kind of texture that he got in his original painting. I looked up a little bit about Vincent van Gogh. He lived in the late 1800s and he didn't live all that long. I think it was 1853 to 1890 that he lived and he painted this painting when he was only 36, which when I hear things like that about these wonderful artists, I think what a loser I am. I have not done anything like that and I am way older than that. But you know, maybe someday I'll be like Whistler's mother and I'll be doing something really fantastic when I'm at a ripe old age. But I, I am really amazed at these artists who accomplished so much in such short lives. He did not live to be very old, but he did an amazing job with the years that he had here on this earth. And I hope to do the same with the years that I have. I want to use everyone to its fullest and create as much as I can. I was in some classes recently and I'll just, I'll tell stories while I finish coloring this because I'm going to speed up the rest since it's basically the same coloring technique as uh, I'd already done on this first part. Oh, except I'll talk about this little section here. I wanted a really intense dark blue there, so I just painted clean water on it first before adding the color. And I didn't have to really worry about having color in it. I just needed to have moisture in order for that blue to get really dark in that, that one little swoosh. So, okay. I was in a class this couple weeks ago and talking with some of the students there about how I plan out my videos and how I come up with ideas because one of them did something on one of the cards in class that I thought was a really cool effect and I wrote it down and they wondered kind of what I was doing so I said well I case you guys I get inspiration from all different kinds of places sometimes from my students and this one of course is from an old master but it doesn't have to be someone who's experienced for me to get inspiration from them so I wrote down the students idea for the way that she had handled painting a certain particular thing and, and drawing a certain kind of pattern. And I thought that would be a really interesting thing to try. But I added it to my list in my phone. I have a list and if you ever keep a list like this, I would highly recommend it because when you end up with no ideas and you're like, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to start, I don't know what stamp set to pull out or anything, I keep a list. It's just in my phone and it probably has about 75 things on it right now. I know that's a ridiculous number. <laughs> I have enough ideas to do all, all that stuff and that doesn't even touch what new inspiration comes to me every day. So I would recommend having a list like that so that on those days when you don't have any inspiration, you can just go to your list and potentially find something that's gonna rock your world. And you're like, I totally forgot I wanted to try that. I list them sometimes by what stamp set they're with uh, that, that I would picture it using or what medium. Uh, I have a lot of stuff on my list that I added when I was in Europe in February this year. Just a ton of different ideas and different ways to approach things, uh, all different kinds of crazy stuff. So yeah, this is, 
this is one of them and I think I'm gonna add some more artists to my my list of things to do on cards because I think that would be really fun so I've sped it up as you can tell painting a little bit faster here and trying to get more of that texture in the sky and in some of those places right around where all those stars are I'm starting to get a little bit of green because that transparent blue is going over top of the yellow but at least it's not bleeding out into the image further if I had done a wet on wet I would end up with a lot more green in that sky and there really isn't much green in Van Gogh's sky now we get to the section with it in the painting the original painting it's like hillsides and then a city down below and I just sketched in some shapes you know just that that was that cliff that he has up there and if you want to see the actual painting next to my picture it'll be on my blog but I just added some really dark colors and they're looking over a city and I really hope they're not planning on going down there for dinner because <laughs> there would be people living in this city but maybe they're just looking and admiring mankind down below at least I hope so so spreading out the color and taking turns between adding water and adding pencil to these finishing areas where I'm gonna finish my last details and as you can tell there's just a little bit of green that appears whenever I hit water over top of that yellow but still still working for me so far and I added the orange moon up in the top that he had in his painting and then I decided I needed more contrast in the shadows underneath of them so that it would really look like that moon is casting light on them directly so I added a lot more little hash marks in there the same way as I did in the sky and the bears which really pulled all that together I also wanted to add more color to the ground I didn't want as much white so I added some yellow in there which worked perfectly and then I added a little bit more grass just along that hillside edge and I wanted to add my sentiment right in that area so I decided to leave it blank now here's one place I did mess up that little star I should have just left it but it bugged me that it was right in right in between their little heads and I tried to fix it and I didn't succeed and oh well I have a big green star in my sky hopefully that's still okay but I stamped the two-part sentiment from the stamp set in a couple of the mama bear or <laughs> mama bear mama elephant ink colors and I just love how this came out. This is actually a card I'm gonna to give to my mom because my mom is my mama bear and she's also an artist. So I thought she might appreciate a artist casing. Here's a couple other ink tense pencil videos and I wanna invite you to come to my blog today because I am giving away a little bit of ink tense pencils. So if you're watching this in mid July, that'd be a good time to click on that link in the upper hand, right hand corner and go to the blog. We'll see you guys later, bye bye.